Thanks, Dr. Pillar. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, Stuart Steinbach. He's from uh, Vibmix. Uh, they are a local company here in Louisville since 97 years. Yes. Uh, he's the vice president of uh, business development in Vipmix, and they make a lot of uh, dental products along with 3D printers and uh, some furnaces. And he will talk more about. Good morning. Yeah, I was the one of the guys who didn't get the heads up from my wife that I was okay to be here till yesterday. So um, I'm just going to speak off the cuff for a little bit. Um, we are the state's sole dental manufacturer. Um, we've been around since 1919 uh, and uh, fourth generation family business. So our, in dentistry, our whole world revolves really around lost wax casting. And you heard Jerry talk about that and what he used to have to do on, on his side. And re the reality is pretty much until um, nearly 15 years ago, every crown made was made through lost wax casting. And that put me through college. Uh, you know, it's paid for uh, a lot of Steinbachs to, to exist here in the state and do well. But the reality is, is dentistry has been shifting, and it really started shifting more with subtractive manufacturing. So milling of crowns has been around for a while, but it was pretty poor. And so it's taken a while to um, kind of coalesce to where, with minimal capital investment, any dental laboratory working for a dentist can produce a crown in under 20 minutes um, if you take out centering time and some of the processing time. But 15 minutes in a $20,000 CAD CAM mill um, and you've, you've got, you basically have a crown. And so that's been replacing the traditional lost wax casting. But if you look at technology and how technology kind of integrates, you always start with centralized production because in the beginning it's complex it's expensive, and so you have aggregators. And then things begin to disaggregate as people figure out how to break systems down, make them modular, make them all interact. Um, and so you don't have the complexity anymore, and then the costs begin to come down, and then you see distributed manufacturing. And so now we're going through the same revolution on the printing side in dental. So if you look at the early interoral um, impression systems that came out, and those were about 10-ish years ago. Um, you had proprietary technology. You were using 3D systems, the big Viper Pro VATS, if you were going to do a print a model in which to fabricate the crown off of. Um, and so you started with that centralized manufacturing on the printing side, and you talked about the, the cost of software. Um, while dentists will buy about anything, um, you got to convince them that a $200,000 software investment is going to pay off. And, well, you probably could, but 120,000 dentists uh, generally in the United States. But on our side, most of the customers that we service on the dental laboratory side, what you see is 17,000 dental labs have been reduced to around 9,000 now. And so CapEx and spending at our customers' levels really pretty important. Um, but what you're seeing now uh, is with the um, um, DLP printers that those price points are coming down dramatically. So instead of a 200 plus thousand sterile lithography Viper Pro to make dental models, you're now able to get DLP with, um, well, and we get into functional build size areas, but say $20,000 price points that'll let you print full models, so full arches. Um, to surgical guides, printed partials, things that require fairly large build areas. Where we kind of get into a rub is we're dealing typically in the sub 100 micron range in terms of accuracy. So for a functional part, we need it extremely accurate. So if you look at jewelry, which has been where a lot of the printers have been sold and a lot of the resin sold, um, that's kind of comparable to us. There, they're typically in the 39 microns, but time's not an issue, right? They can take 24 hours to build a single ring. Tiffany's has enough margin they can do that. We have a different turn cycle. So, you know, I need that part, and typically two hours is kind of at the long end of where I'm looking at. I'm looking at, at a lot bigger part, sometimes more complex geometry or really fragile pieces parts. It's not necessarily just a big, bulky ring. Um, so our world's 
kind of a little bit different. So we've been trying to adapt technology, um, but you're seeing a whole rash of innovation now on the DLP style printers. So, um, or sort of similar, you've got Form Labs, which is more of a laser based system. That's in that $3,500 price point, but you typically see that the micron range is 150 plus, which isn't acceptable for most of my customers' applications. You can get away with a surgical guide, something that rests on soft tissue in the mouth because you've got that much movement in play. But when you're talking about a crown, your periodontal ligaments that hold your teeth in place only will flex about 50 microns. So when you go to seat that crown, you don't have a lot of movement or play. So um, we've been evaluating printers. We've looked at, uh, we started with a company out of Germany um, that was private labeling the Neomo printers that are built in, in China. Um, struggled and struggled and struggled, just not able to get the repeatable accuracy in the build plate sizes that we needed. Then uh, Autodesk came to us and asked us to evaluate their Ember printer. Really nice, sweet little printer. Works out of the box, $7,500, but the build plate is pretty teeny tiny. So um, if it was just about casting part or small teeth crowns, that'd be one thing. But we've seen a complete sea change where it used to be 80% of all the crowns, and this is only going back maybe five-ish years, a little bit longer. 80% of the crowns that were made domestically were, were a metal substructure with porcelain over top. 20% were all ceramic, and that relationship has completely flipped. So the cast parts in our industry just aren't that, that valuable of a commodity any longer, and the reality is a number of those now are being laser-centered. So the alloys have come along to the point where you can now do a semi-precious gold crown laser-centered, which is amazing when you think about the amount of uh, material you got to load in those magazines. Um, but we looked at the Ember from Autodesk. We played a little bit with the form labs. Didn't see that for us the tolerances were where we were looking. Um, and then uh, finally got introduced to a company out of Australia called Asiga, which makes some really, really sweet DLP printers. And so um, in the last month, Whitmix uh, was able to pick up the exclusive distribution for Asiga in the United States for the dental industry. Um, and as part of that, I'm not really wanting to be a used car lot because at the end of the day, that's what capital equipment is, right? It's high volume, low margin. Um, and if when you're a manufacturer, that, that doesn't really pay the bills if your overhead's built on the margins of manufacturing. Um, and so we went out and hired a really talented photopolymer out of uh, uh, Bowen's group in, in Colorado and have had her on board and slowly upgrading our lab. Um, but she's, and she's done a phenomenal job. Our first resin that we're gonna produce here in the state will be um, for making dental models. So suddenly we're playing with pigments and photo initiators and um, you, most of you probably don't know casting investment chemistry, but it's, uh, we blend 50,000 pounds of powder a day. And now we're talking about mixing the, the liquid resins, and it's pretty exciting. Um, so suddenly we're worried about, well, where do I find the sleeves for my, uh, my light so I don't uh, overexpose everything and it hardens while we're, while we're trying to blend. Um, so it's a pretty exciting time at Whitmix, and uh, we're getting into a lot of stuff that um, I've hoped for years we'd be able to kind of get in and play with, but it's really finding that right mix of talent. Uh, we've got two young millennials, so it's a Gen X guy. Um, I think I like millennials. Um, I really like these two. But, you know, what's really cool is uh, one guy, his father's a dentist, but he's got a computer science background undergrad, um, went to dental technology school in Lexington that's unfortunately since closed. The other fellow, his father owns a dental laboratory, worked there, undergraduate degree in finance, um, and came back into dental technology. But they're both tinkerers um, because what's amazing is their ability to collaborate but bounce back and forth between the design software and like Jerry was talking about, how do we bring in comb beam CTs for some projects and be able to manipulate, pull stuff out, what, what can we strip out that we don't need, um, and then be able to print out functional parts um, out, of, out of STLs, combine that with hardware of our existing product lines at times um, so we can make a truly, instead of an average value instrument, make something patient specific. Um, so they do it a lot of hybridization, but they'll bounce between the design software, the software parameters of the, of the printers, um, 
And these are kind of, I mean, just two average guys, but there are that, this generation's ability to deep, dive down deep and integrate disparate things is pretty amazing to just how does the hardware work. So we've got problems. We print a dental model um, with a removable die. It's got channels that have to go back down into it. And so depending on the viscosity of what you're printing, um, and you're upside down, um, and how the light's coming back through there, we were getting a lot of rounding off of those channels that are supposed to be square. Um, and then just figuring out, all right, how do I slow down this part if I do a different angle here? I mean, uh, the problem solving and the engineering that these guys go through with really no, I mean, they're dental technicians. Um, it's pretty amazing. But uh, we've got a wonderful team at, at Whitmix that we've put together and are adding to. And, um, we're pretty excited to finally be in the game, so thank you all. Thanks a lot, Stuart. For, uh, next, we'll have uh, Mr. Kevin. Uh, sure. Sorry, we'll take a short break. Yeah. Ten minutes. <laughs>